Well, folks, the stock market has entered such a boring mode. For the past month, the market has been incredibly boring. A lot of people want to know, why is this happening? Is this going to continue on this boring market? The answer to that is, a quick answer is, absolutely not. Things are going to get pretty dang crazy, okay? And I'm going to show you what's going to transpire here in this video as well. But we're going to just dissect and talk about, like, why has the market been so boring for this past month? I'm going to give you the four main reasons why this has transpired, why this has happened, okay? We'll also talk about a few opportunities I see out there in the market and things like that. So whether you're a newer investor to the market, you, I think you'll learn a lot of, from today's video. If you're an experienced investor, I think you'll just enjoy today's video because, uh, yeah, it's a fun one. I appreciate everybody joining me as always. Thanks so much for being subscribed, folks. Something a little different here today okay so for the past month the queues has gone absolutely nowhere i mean absolutely nowhere it's made a 0.13 percent move in the past flip and flapjack and month right absolutely nothing and people are like man the market was so entertaining there for a while right i mean it was really entertaining honestly for 18 months let's, let's call it what it is 18 months you know 2022 the market got wrecked, stocks got wrecked. That was entertaining. Like it was, you know, if you're taking advantage of deals like myself and maybe some of you guys were like, that was a great uh, time to be in the market, right? But it was a highly entertaining market. Like every day it seemed like, you know, this stock crashed and the whole market crashed and oh my gosh, the end of the world and the Fed's raising rates more, right? And then the first half of 2023, obviously was super entertaining. That was almost the inverse of 2022, right? But we were just up in a straight line. So really we had like 18 months of just a super entertaining market and just like a lot of fun. And now all of a sudden it's turning to this like boring mode, right? You look at the S&P 500, it's hardly moved in the past month. The hardly moved, right? I mean, you know, look at a stock like Meta. Meta's up a whole 1% in the past month. Look at a stock like AMD. It's a 2% mover in the past month. Look at a stock like NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been one of the most volatile stocks in the entire stock market for the past, you know, 18 to 24 months. And NVIDIA is, you know, a 3% mover in the past month. Ubidi Booba stock. Look at Ubidi Booba stock, right? A uh, 1% mover in the past month, right? So it's just very, very like mundane, boring market for this past month, okay? Reason number one of four why this is transpiring is the previous two months. The previous two months before we got to this past month were absolutely beautiful. They were up in a straight line. They were highly entertaining, right? Look at the queues on a three month and you can, you can see this played out by a three month chart, right? The queues on the past three months is up over 12%. So, you know, we looked at the queues obviously in the past month and it's like, wow, the queues have done nothing, right? Not really up, not really down, but yeah, it had already gone on a beast run going up prior to obviously the past month, right? Look at the S&P 500 in the past three months, 8%. Usually the, the general saying is S&P 500 is gonna get you about an 8%-ish type return a year, right? And the S&P 500 went up 8% plus in a matter of two months. So we came off of a very, very hot S&P 500, right? Meta stock is up to almost 28% in the past three months, right? It's a very, very extraordinary move for Meta. So yeah, it's gone sleepy recently, but it's been hot, right? AMD's a double digit gainer in the past three months. And Nvidia, almost a 43 flip and flap jack and percent move in the past three months, right? So the fact is, you know, sometimes in the market, it, you, after you go through a very hot time, you need to take a breather. Oh, you gotta take a little breather, okay? And that's exactly what we have seen transpire. We had an incredible, obviously, three month span, but the past month has just been a sleepiness out of those three months, okay? It's very natural for markets to do that over time. You're not gonna be up in a straight line every single day. It's not always gonna be the most exciting time in the market, okay? Reason number two why this market has become very boring here recently and really lost a lot of momentum is AI. Blah, okay? AI has been a big disappointment so far. Obviously, the first half of the year, from basically almost the start of the year all the way through, you know, to July, there was so much excitement about artificial intelligence and, you know, how all these stocks are going to benefit, and we've been nothing but let down so far, okay? You know, AMD is a perfect example. Everybody got so excited, AMD is going to do this, AMD is going to do that, right? And AMD should be a successful player in the AI market in a substantial way in future years, right? But right now, AMD's just not seeing the benefit, right? AMD's revenues are actually down 18% for this most recent quarter they just reported. That's obviously, uh, you know, bad, 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 right? And so obviously the stock just fell, 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 and that just took, that just zapped a lot of momentum 
out of this market when those AMD results came out, right? Even a stock like Adobe's gotten thrown into the, oh, you know, this is, you know, super exciting AI uh, capabilities and a lot of their different products and services. All this is going to be huge for them. And we just haven't seen it in the numbers in regards to Adobe and look at that stock price move down, right? Tesla, my ass, obviously gets grouped into AI, uh, you know, for obviously their self-driving software and those sorts of things, right? But, you know, here's the thing when it comes to Tesla and AI, okay? And I think this needs to be set, okay? Tesla is a massive long-term beneficiary of artificial intelligence, right? In terms of self-driving software, it's not even finished as of today, right? So if you're thinking out five years from now, sure, Tesla, you know, robo-taxi networks, uh, opportunity and all that stuff, right? Beautiful. And, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, $99 a month, maybe $199 a month for their self-driving software once it's complete, complete, and it's not like a beta version anymore, right? And it's a real deal, holy field, finished, 100% finished, right? Yeah, at that moment, a, uh, you know, Tesla can be actually generating significant revenues and profitabilities from AI. But right now, it's not really its time to shine yet, right? It, Obviously, they've been working on AI for years and they continue to do that, but it's not like it's really necessarily helping in the numbers in some epic way as of right now. It should in future years, okay? And so that stock just got zapped. You know, people just want the, the money now, right? Even a stock like Microsoft, which has definitely got grouped into AI stocks and all their AI capabilities and their investment in ChatGPT and those sorts of things. And we just saw in their numbers, like Microsoft's numbers were good. Their earnings were good, but it wasn't like there was some insane numbers from artificial intelligence, right? Just everybody got way too excited that this is going to be a game changer, even in regards to Palantir. And I know a lot of people say, oh, Palantir doesn't matter to the market that much. It's not a big enough market cap. It matters so much more than people think. Palantir is a very famous stock, especially in the retail community. But even outside the retail community, a lot of Wall Street, big Wall Street analysts have picked up the stock now at this point in time. And so a lot more eyeballs are on Palantir than there were, I can tell you, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, okay? And when it comes to Palantir, obviously their earnings were just like, you know, uh, a letdown, right? They came in line with EPS. They came in line with uh, revenue. Like they barely met. They barely met their expectations. And so when you barely meet your expectations, uh, yeah, that's going to zap all the, the excitement out of the room. And then they barely upped their revenue guidance for next quarter. So it's clear as day that Palantir is not seeing a short-term bump from anything AI related. Now, could this benefit Palantir over the next five years? Sure. And we might see that in Palantir's numbers in a substantial way over the next five years, right? But as of today, the fact is we're not seeing AI bump up Palantir's revenues in a substantial way. And that's a massive monumental letdown for investors out there seeing that when, you know, the expectation was, oh, this is going to be a game changer for us and we're going to start seeing crazy numbers, right? And so now everybody's looking at NVIDIA, right? And they're saying, what are you going to do, NVIDIA? What are you going to do, right? And we've even seen weakness coming in NVIDIA. NVIDIA's earnings haven't even come out yet, right? And we've already seen, you know, substantial weakness. I mean, the stock's dropped 60 to $70 a share in just the past few weeks. And the reason NVIDIA's stock has dropped, you know, 60 to $70 a share in the past few weeks is because of all these letdowns, letdown, 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 right? And I don't think it's really the company's fault. It's just more of investors' fault for assuming that AI was going to be just a game changer immediately. And it's like... And this stuff is a multi-year, multi-decade opportunity to assume it's all going to happen in one quarter or something like that. It's just very misguided. Like, take a little deep breath here. Let things play out, okay? Let the business cycle play out, and we'll have some fun here in regards to AI and the opportunity there. But, you know, that's, that's a market for you. They get too excited too fast, then they get let down, and then the thing actually happens and it becomes real and, and you know, some people miss it, okay? Reason number three why this market has gone really, really boring is a lot of people taking the P, right? Taking the profit, taking the profit. And, you know, when, when obviously you have a certain segment of folks that take the profit, it's going to put selling pressure on the market. And so, you know, you're always going to have buying pressure in the market, right? People are buying in their retirement accounts and, you know, index fund buying and, and folks like myself that are buying individual stocks every week. So you're always going to have a certain amount of buying out there. But when you have a lot of people deciding to take the P at, at a given moment, it's going to zap momentum out of the market, right? And, you know, listen, we've had an extraordinary year, right? Even after this most recent drop in the Qs, we're still up 36 plus percent year to date 
uh, for the NASDAQ, right? For the Qs, that is specifically, right? It's extraordinary. Look at a portfolio like mine. Like the public account entered this year around a million dollars. As of right now, it's 1.7 million plus, right? It's not where it was at the peak, which was back in, I think, early July. We're at 1.8, right? But, you know, when you have a move like that, a lot of people say, let me just go ahead. Let me take some profits here. Uh, you know, let me cash out some. And, you know, you got to understand it because one, the move's been extraordinary, right? And a lot of stocks have moved massive and not everybody's a long-term, not everybody's like, I'm going to buy Tesla stock and hold it for the next five years. I'm going to buy Meta stock and hold it for the next five years. Not everybody thinks like that, right? Not everybody's a long-term investor. You got to understand a lot of people in the stock market are not long-term investors. They're trying to, you know, make money short term and, you know, do these sorts of things. And that's their own agenda. And that's their own thing. Like they can do whatever they want, right? They play their game. I'll play my game, right? I'm going after the, the loaves of bread. I don't want to go after the breadcrumbs. But when a lot of people get a lot of breadcrumbs, a lot of people are going to eat those breadcrumbs up. Okay. And so that's just something you, you have to understand that's going on out there in the market, right? And not only are people looking at the performance and saying, you know, let me take some profit, but then they're saying, well, I can also put this money in places to generate myself some pretty dang easy money, right? SoFi right now, you can get like four and a half percent on a savings account through SoFi, right? You know, you look at like Ally Bank. Ally Bank has a high yield CD right now that, you know, for nine months, as long as you keep it locked up there for nine months, you get 5% on your money. A lot of people say, hmm, that's, you know, pretty good. 5% if you held it for a year, obviously, if it's only for nine months, you'll get a little less than that, right? Even when they got a no penalty CD, right? So you can pull it out at, at any time and you get 4.55% a rate on that, right? And so a lot of people say, well, I could take this nice profits I have here and then put that money where I can get four or 5% uh, basically guaranteed money. Uh, yeah. And let me, let, let me just watch and kind of see how this show plays out, right? Some people will say, you know, I'd rather sell NVIDIA at 450, put it into a CD or a savings account right now, right? And, you know, wait and see how things play out. And so if I miss a move to 550, it is what it is. But I don't want to go from 450 to 350. And so that's the way some investors think, right? And you obviously look at treasuries. I mean, treasuries are yielding insane right now, right? On a three-month, 5.42% for a government treasury, uh, a six month, 5.47%, a 12 month, 5.34%. I mean, you know, you could make really, really, really good money uh, just holding a treasury right now, right? So that's going on. Reason number four, and then we'll discuss if this is gonna continue on or if this is about to end and things are about to get crazy, okay? Reason number four, shorts. They got, they covered, they got wrecked, right? Let's be honest, going into this year, Everybody in their grandma was bearish, right? No one was buying in the back half of last year. That's why there was such just drop, like insane drops that you never thought were possible. Like I never thought Meta stock would go to, I mean, under a hundred dollars. Like I couldn't even conceive of Meta going under 150. Never mind under a hundred. Like it was stupid. But when you have everybody and their grandma wanting to sell stocks, no one wanting to buy them. Like Tesla went to a hundred. Like really? Like like Nvidia went to 110. Like these moves were insane, right? But everybody got so overly bearish. They shorted to the hill. They bought put options. They did all those sorts of things, right? And they have now covered, right? They all got, had basically had to cover heavy in that first half of the year because they were just getting wrecked day after day. I mean, many of those stocks that people were shorting heavy, right? Buying put options like crazy, all that stuff. Remember, Many of those stocks climbed between 50% and 250% in a matter of nine months. Nine months. We're not talking about nine years. We're talking about nine months, folks. When that happens, shorts are going to have to cover, cover, cover. When you got all those shorts covering, obviously it puts even more buying pressure on these stocks. You can get these gamma squeezes. You can get all types of crazy stuff, right? And if we think, right? So obviously this is the way the stock chart has played out over the past, you know, uh, nine to 10 months. But what a lot of folks assumed, including well, most Wall Streeters, they were probably the most pessimistic and negative of everybody, right? You know, there was definitely a lot of retail folks that got very negative and pessimistic and chose not to buy the dip in 2022. But I can tell you there's a lot more Wall Streeters with big money that thought we were going down and down and down. They thought this is the way the stock chart was going to look, right? And it's looked literally the opposite of what they thought, just up in basically a straight line, right? Absolutely extraordinary move. 
And where everybody screwed up that was just overwhelmingly bearish, where they all screwed up is, and I've been reading a great book recently. Uh, I got a rape up my bed. I've just been enjoying this book, you know, reading through it and whatnot. Uh, Mastering the Market Cycle, Howard Marks. Where a lot of people really screwed up, I'll be honest, is the Fed lags, right? And so many people ran to the assumption that, that the market was going to be destroyed, the economy was going to be destroyed in 2023. That's what the, the assumption they ran to. 2023, everything's going to be doomsday. And a lot of people thought we would bottom out the stock market around probably like mid-year or very early in the second half of 2023, right? Economy gets hit really bad in 2023. And then, you know, some point in 2023, the, the Fed pivots. They move the other way, right? Economy kind of bottoms. And, um, you know, eventually you kind of start to head up, you know, at the end of this year or into 2024. And obviously it just didn't play out that way at all. But the thing people got to understand is when it comes to Fed lags, if they just done a little study on history, okay, the Fed lags take between, you know, I've I studied this uh, all throughout these past history. And the Fed lags basically talking about how long from when the Fed starts raising rates until it really starts to affect the economy in a negative way, right? What I have found over time is it takes between one in three years for the Fed lags to, ke- to really kick in, okay, and really hit the economy hard, hit the stock market hard. Well, if you were planning at 2023, it was, you know, a for sure thing, and you got to sell out all your stocks in, in short, you're making a huge mistake because you were basically betting that very early on, we were going to just destroy the thing. So more toward the one year. Well, if it's usually one to three years, you kind of want to bet more on the mean, right, which is two years. So if it's two years, then 2024 should be when we see the Fed lags catch in, really kick in in a, in a major way and really start to devastate the economy. But also keep this in mind, right? It's not guaranteed that it's going to be in 2024 either. It could also be in 2025. Remember, it's one to three years. And they started obviously raising rates. It was around uh, either February or March of 2022, right? So it could be 2024. That would be the you know average if it takes one to three years, two years usually, right? Or it could be all the way out into 20, 2025, right? So you can't even necessarily bet that for sure in 2024 we're sinking this market, right? One to three years. So that's where everybody screwed up in a massive, massive, massive way, okay? Now, the next question is, will this last? And then we'll talk about some opportunities in the market, okay? And I will tell you, the answer to the will this boring market last is... Absolutely not. It's about to end in a pretty quick way, okay? In a major way. NVIDIA. 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 They report on the 23rd. I'm recording this video right now on the 13th. It is 10 days from now, okay? When NVIDIA reports earnings, it is going to shake up the entire market in a massive way. Remember, this is almost, this is pretty much the leader stock of the stock market. This is, this is our captain. It's not Apple. It's not actually Microsoft. It's not Google McDougal. It's not Meta. It's not Tesla. This is the leader of the stock market. And I know it's not the biggest market cap, but this is our fearless leader, NVIDIA, okay? And so if NVIDIA comes out and reports so-so earnings, or there's a situation where next quarter is not that exciting, and maybe some of the AI buzz is dying down a little bit, I can tell you it's going to put a massive, massive damper on the market, and we will not be in the best place. On the flip side, If NVIDIA comes in and kills it again, which is certainly a possibility, right? Then we start momentum back in. Oh, AI is not over, okay? AI is, you know, this thing that's here and it's going to play out and we're going to have some fun here, okay? So NVIDIA, epic for this market, okay? Now, in terms of some opportunities I see in this market, okay? And then we'll talk about, you know, some important earnings that are coming this week. There's a lot of opportunities. I I said to the private group this uh, earlier in the week, right? I said, you know, there's a lot of stocks, and I'm buying every single week. There's a lot of stocks that are great deals out there. There's some insanely attractive hedge opportunities. So in case this economy goes boom, boom in 2024, there's some real opportunities out there, in my personal opinion. And also, you can get great returns on cash. This is the most beautiful market I've ever seen in the financial markets. I'm like, the fact that you can get some great stocks for some super insane discounts right now, you got all these insane hedge opportunities in case the economy goes boom, boom. And you can get 4 to 5% basically on guaranteed money through treasury, CD, savings accounts, things like that. Uh, talk about like an absolutely beautiful, beautiful market. I mean, that's unbelievable, right? So I'm looking at that. Now, in terms of this week, right, we have definitely some, I would say, very, very important earnings. And especially on the retail front, right? 
You got Home Depot right there uh, before the open on Tuesday. I think that's a very, very important stock, obviously, to pay attention to and kind of see what's going on with the economy and housing and all those sorts of things. You got Target reporting before the open on Wednesday, obviously one of the biggest retailers, uh, certainly in, in North America, right? That's going to be a very important stock to report earnings. Then you got Walmart reporting Thursday before, before the bell, right? I mean, holy smoke, this is no dang joke. It's like, you know, you get Home Depot one day, Target the next day, Walmart. I mean, this is the United States uh, retail. Uh, <laughs> so not only are the numbers going to be reported, but I think if anything, we're actually coming out of a goods recession right now. And so I'm actually expecting all these companies to report actually pretty respectable back half of the year. But specifically, I'm thinking Target. Target's the one I'm most confident in second half of this year. Really strong numbers. So we'll hear if they have any guidance to give, right? And then I'm also keeping a close eye on Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder is a stock that's one of the best stocks in the market over the past, you know, 20, 30, 40 years, whatever, right? But it's a stock that is in a bad place right now. It's pretty much at its five-year lows or so. So I'm actually keeping an eye on Estee Lauder, seeing if something there. And then you got uh, DE John Deere reporting as well, okay? So folks, that's the market. That's what we're dealing with right now. And uh, yeah, it's an exciting time to be in the market, okay? Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I appreciate everybody being here. I appreciate y'all being subscribed. Make sure to check out my reaction channel if you haven't checked that out already. That's Jeremy Lefebvre Makes Money. You can type that in YouTube and you'll be able to find uh, that channel out there. I always do a lot of reactions every single week. So I appreciate all you that are subscribed over there and enjoy that channel as well. Okay, Much love. appreciate y'all and have a great day.